Okay, we've come to page four of your class notes where we're going to be covering dilations, which I believe are probably the most intuitive of the four types of transformations we will be studying. Uh, the word dilation uh, usually brings to mind making something bigger, but when we talk about dilations in geometry, we can also mean making something smaller. A dilation is a transformation that takes a pre-image and it makes it bigger or smaller without changing the actual shape. Because dilations do not alter the shape of our pre-image, it's possible for us to say that the image we get from a dilation is similar to its pre-image because it has the same shape. Okay, uh, you were given this green box on the coordinate plane and you were asked to dilate it around a point. The point that they gave you had the coordinates of 0, 5 and they wanted you to dilate it around that point. So when we're doing a dilation and we're given this reference point like we have here with the point labeled 5, 0, or rather x equals 0, y equals 5, the first thing we want to do is we want to look at the distance between this reference point and different points on our pre-image. Because we're working with a square, what we're going to notice is that um, the distance between any of these points that I've identified and this reference point is a distance of two. When we are asked to dilate something two times around this point, it means we want to increase the distance by a factor of two. So if I take this point right here as my first pre-image point that I'm going to work with and I want to construct its image, it means that I want to construct a point that is twice the distance from this reference point as our pre-image. So I'm going to take the pre-image distance, which is two, and multiply it by a factor of two, since we are dilating it twice. That's the same thing as multiplying by a factor of two. So if this point has a distance of two, my image must have a distance of four. So I'm gonna start marking my image points in in red. I think I need a little bit thicker marker here. Okay, there, that's better. Okay, so this was my pre-image, this was my image. I can do the same thing on this side because this has the same distance from this reference point as our first point did. I know that my image is going to be four units away from our reference point, but just in the opposite direction. And then it's pretty easy to see that I can create images of the remaining two points using the same methodology. The next thing I wanna do is I just want to identify these corner points. And once again, I need a thicker marker. Okay, what about these corner points right here? How am I going to replicate them? And remember, in all of these transformations, you don't need to replicate every point. You just need to pick a few of the most important points, and then you can reconstruct your figure just off a handful of points. So if I look at uh, the distance of this point from our reference point, I notice that it has a distance that is equal to uh, the length of the diagonals of two of these squares that make up our grid, these very small gray squares that make up the grid of our coordinate plane. So once again, the distance from this point to our reference point is equal to the length of two of the diagonal, or 
is equal to the length of the diagonals of two of the small squares. So I need to multiply this distance by two because I am dilating this image two times or I'm dilating it or scaling it up by a factor of two. So that means now to replicate this point, I need to travel a distance of four diagonals away from the reference point. So that's going to put me right up here. And I can use the very same reasoning in constructing the remaining corner points. And now I have enough points where I can construct the image of the green square.